Since 2021, Perseverance has used its drill and abrading bit to make dozens of circular patches that allow the science instruments a better look at rocks. For the latest one, it somehow managed to create something both enigmatic and artistic. On this episode of Mars Guy, we last left Perseverance among some strangely shaped rocks on the outer rim of Jezero Crater. Here's Mars Guy for scale. They're certainly an interesting target to investigate, but with such irregular surfaces, it'd be hard to deploy the arm on them. The team instead chose a more regular version several meters away. It displays fluting that's similar to portions of the weird rocks, so it may be made of the same stuff. Perseverance started with its gas dust removal tool to blow away dust from a small patch. As I showed at the end of the last episode, the exposed surface is quite strange, unlike any rock seen before. The purplish streaks certainly are not unusual. They're eroded patches of a rock coating that's been observed since the beginning of the mission. A newly published paper reinforces earlier work that showed the coating essentially is composed of the same stuff as in the dust, but somehow cemented to the surface. This likely required some amount of liquid water, which happened relatively recently given that the coatings are stuck on eroded rock surfaces. So this is yet another clue about the comings and goings of water on Mars. The dark gray surface under the coating is what's different. It looks like a mix of angular, lighter tone grains and darker vein-like features. It's hard to tell if these are actual grains like in a sedimentary rock or fractured pieces of a once solid mass of rock. And rock veins usually have much lighter stuff in them, like quartz, gypsum, or carbonate. My best guess is we're looking at impact melt breccia, either from the Jezero impact or from an earlier one, and then dredged up by the Jezero impact. Next up was a grind into the surface with the abrading bit, which is immediately followed by a supersonic blast from G-Dirt to remove the tailings. In this view, it almost looks like some of the tailings might have remained in the abrasion patch, but the close-up view with the Watson camera on the end of the robotic arm provided a startling alternative. It wasn't tailings left behind, but some of the original rock surface. Turns out that the fluted surface texture of the rock combined with a slightly angled grind, led to this result. The abrasion looks deeper toward the bottom of this scene, so the bit didn't cut in as much toward the top. And wherever the bottom of any of the flutes were below the level of the grind, they were preserved. It's still surprising, though, to see that a portion was left untouched by the bit, preserving continuity between the original surface, both inside and outside the circle. The pronounced salt and pepper look of the abraded circle is also surprising, considering how dark gray the original surface appears. This seems to show that even that surface has some kind of coating or alteration that obscures the salt and pepper look underneath. So thanks to the artistry of perseverance with its abrading bit, we're reminded that you can't judge a rock by its cover. 